All right, so I'm perusing, you know, comic book news, and I see uh, this article from Bleeding Fool, not to be confused with Bleeding Cool. And this article talks about, <clears throat> are Disney Marvel shows tanking your comic book collection value? So, you know how it is. A new show comes out, everyone speculates, everyone wants that character's first appearance. Uh, you know, books are being, you know, going for 10 times the value they normally would so on and so forth but has anyone ever considered that there could be a reverse effect to that especially if the show is considered to be bad thus who wants a character's first appearance for a horrible show or movie so let's go ahead and see uh, what victor james of bleeding cool's got to say he says uh mr naspit's words are never true when it comes to pricing the modern comic book industry i have no idea who that person is by the way uh, but he, he's, he's been quoted to say value is what people are willing to pay for it, which is absolutely true. It's very important to remember that value is, is what something uh, is something. It's very important to remember that value is what something is worth. But the price is the amount someone is selling for. These two numbers often don't match up. That's right. I can go on eBay and I can put a Niobe comic book for a hundred bucks, but if no one wants to pay a hundred bucks for it, is it really worth a hundred bucks? No. There are so many factors that can affect the price and value of a comic book. Scarcity, condition, speculative market, which is usually the big one. Character popularity, storyline events, not so much anymore, etc. Most comic key issues tend to hold steady in value and even increase over time, raising the price, especially after a major event. I would say a show on Disney Plus counts as a major event, but there are poorly received shows devaluing comic books, question <clears> mark. <throat> Uh, very well could be the case. I mean, oftentimes there's a short speculation boom, and then that quickly sort of dies out after a few months. While listening to our recent Yellow Flash video, he casually mentioned on how the price of She-Hulk's first appearance has fallen since the debut of She-Hulk Attorney at Law. Just like there are many reasons a comic could go up in price, there are just as many reasons for a comic book to devalue. Drastic character change, diluting the franchise with too many versions, or just overusing a character until he or she becomes a cliché. Or Marvel and DC can blacklist the best creators of the industry because of ideology, and often do. There are at least half a dozen sites pricing comics, all telling you what a comic book should be worth. Most of these sites are often paid to play, and quite frankly, I do not feel like wasting my money, but I found another way. Well, before we get into his another way, the Bible it used to be considered the Bible. I'm not sure anymore. I think eBay is the Bible now. But the Bible used to be the Overstreet Price Guide. Okay, every year this big thick ass book would come out and it would have, uh, you know, an average of what all these comic books were, were, were to be worth. And for the longest time, comic book shops would price their back issue bins based off of what they seen in the Overstreet price guide. eBay now really determines what, what a comic book is worth, because, again, it goes back to the saying a book is only worth as much as someone is willing to pay for it. Right. So evidence, question mark. Yeah, we all like evidence, right? The collection uh, tracking site, price charting, did give some ideas perhaps that Yellow Flash was speaking the truth. Admittedly, having one source is not ideal. So take that with a grain of salt because, you know, we're all cheap and we don't want to pay for anything, myself included, by the way. I'm not paying for a comic book price guy when eBay is right fucking there. I welcome any, uh, any evidence from one of the many pay sites that contradicts this. However, uh, us poor folk must work with what we have and nothing is better than free. Of course. According to the price charting website, how do we calculate comic book prices? Well, we monitor every eBay sale for comic books, right? So if you can just monitor eBay yourself and just look at the average, you don't really need this site, to be honest with you. Uh, we use technology, uh, proprietary technology. We assign each, uh, we assign a sale to, uh, to an issue toss the junk and record the grade of each sale our comic book pricing algorithm then determines the value of each issue for each grade you can see historic prices for every issue so that you know which comic books are increasing in price and which are dropping using these prices in our collection tracker you can keep track of how much your comic book collection is worth <clears throat> go figure maybe so price charting follows what people are actually paying for comics, not what they should be worth. So in other words, if you go to eBay and you look at what people are charging for comics, that's not accurate. What you need to do is click on the sold box and see what they're actually selling for. 
there are definitely sites other than eBay that are not factored into the algorithm, so it's very possible for these prices to increase. Uh, but eBay is where the normies tend to buy comics, so it works as a test case. Look, you can go to different comic book shops across the across the realm, and some shops don't even price an issue, like back issue, until you bring it up to the counter, and then they run it through eBay, and then give you a price, you know, because they don't want to be, uh, you know, taken advantage of, so to speak. Well, they need to do their homework before they price their comics. I did a search uh, for the key issue, Sal Savage She-Hulk number one, the first appearance of She-Hulk. I used the listings of raw, loose, ungraded, and those graded at 8.0 and 9.2 because I felt those would be the most common for non-CGC graded books. Results is that you can see by, by the time the Disney She-Hulk series was announced in October 2021, the price for issue number one was already on the decline. A surefire indicator of a thriving comic book industry, yet after the announcement, there was a no noticeable jump in price. So... You know, we've seen this time and time again. Big excitement, big buzz, new movie, big rumor, big speculation, and then big failure. So here in this little graph, they got a 9.2 at $251, an 8.0 at $190, and a raw dog copy, who knows the condition, at $160. Uh, this can be more than likely chalked up to speculators or price gougers charging more in anticipation. No, that is absolutely true. Have seen them, have live streamed with them, know all about how their operation works. Love or hate this practice, but speculators do move the needle when it comes to comic price and value. Temporarily, they do. Everything sort of tends to fizzle out and settle down after a year. People pay what they think it can be worth. No, people pay what they think they gotten on a deal and then think about what they can sell it for after to increase their fucking profit. It's called flipping. By the time She-Hulk Attorney at Law debuted in uh, August 2022, She-Hulk number one has settled down to a decent $200 range. As you can see, uh, you know, dropping about 50 bucks is what happened there. However, after the show's dismal performance, the price you can get this key issue on eBay has plummeted significantly. So down another <coughs> uh, $75. So now you're looking at $124 for a 9.8. You know, it costs almost half that just to grade a book. Uh, this is a steep decline in value for the first appearance of an iconic character like She-Hulk, which should anger comic book store owners because that money is out of their pocket. Well, no, <clears throat> the money was never really in their pocket, though, was it? Unless that they were quick to sell when the show was announced, and usually you have to do this before the show even airs. Like you have to sort of have that inside track. You know, you have to keep uh, keep up with the beats and and sell then. I mean, selling after the show is released or. Or a few months down the road, uh, yeah, it's going to be dismal because that excitement is already gone. You got to remember that we're, we're like, ooh, shiny, and the next little shiny thing is, you know, we we give that attention to the new piece and not the old piece, right? That's how it works. Uh, to research further, they did a search for Werewolf uh, by Night Thirty Two, the first appearance in Moon Knight. Who gives a fuck? Uh, again, there was a bump in the price uh, when the show debuted in March twenty twenty two. It held steady for months. And then after the show, uh, before it declined, uh, Moon Knight was better received by the audience. So this may explain why decline in value was not as steep as She-Hulk. Well, it's also an older book, right? Uh, you know, you look at this book, it's got the uh, 25 cent price tag. She-Hulk is still like a modern sort of 80s book. You know, some people really don't want to buy, you know, uh, outside of bronze, silver or golden. Another show, Hawkeye, did not seem to have the same effect on Hawkeye's first appearance in Tales of Suspense 57. There is a small decline in price uh, far after the show's debut in November 2021. But before I was uh, willing to say that Yellow Flash may have been wrong, I investigated the characters uh, Marvel Studios is trying to push with these series and movies. There was a bump in Young Avengers number one, the first appearance of Kate Bishop at the time the show debuted in November 21. This was followed by a ridiculous spike in price in March 2022 after I suspect the speculators believing that this would be returning as the new Hawkeye. Look, Anytime there's a buzz, anytime there's a show, this is going to happen. And like I said, it's all going to fizzle out and settle down afterwards. Speculators. Uh, that quickly died down. However, with the demise of the show, setting the price uh, uh, at that is still too high for uh, people's comfort. Oh, fuck, your things are expensive now, man. Uh, and this is when things get compelling. A quick search for Miss Marvel number one, which I have this book, by the way. I got the first printing. Now, debating getting it graded and selling it. Found the same pattern of a bump before the show's debut in June, followed by decline afterwards. Yeah, because the hype is only temporary, my dude. 
Like, fuck. Uh, they're showing a 9.2 at uh, 215. Mine would be a 9.8. I'm pretty sure mine's a 9.8. So who knows what I can get for it. Uh, yeah, the interesting thing is if you look at all the data or data, sir, uh, it's data, price charting has to offer, the price of both Miss Marvel and Kate Bishop's first appearances have decreased overall since the show's debut. According to the graph, Miss Marvel number one was worth more before the show, which was the opposite outcome you expect from a major event. Yes, because the hype is over. A similar search for Invincible Iron Man 7, the first cameo by Riri Williams, you can see a massive decline in price after Black Panther Wakanda Forever debuted in October 2022. Yeah, because no one cares anymore. The hype is over. I don't fucking get it. In fact, you can get Riri's first appearance for less than $50 in all grades currently on eBay after the speculation market had pushed the price to three times the amount before the movie. Yeah. <coughs> the other problem is, is just no one cares about these characters in the end right the speculators buy these books in case people do care about these characters in the future no one really cares though so they all drop in value right uh the conclusion obviously this evidence is very circumstantial i would agree but price charting is only one site using an algorithm searching a single platform ebay but that is it's like saying that there's another crowdfunder site other than kickstarter there may be but none of them really count none of them really matter and additional searches on price charting from other popular MCU characters demonstrate that their first appearances are doing just fine. Sure, I mean, you have a classic Silver Age character, those first appearances are always going to be hot. For instance, Iron Man 55, the first appearance of Thanos, is as hard to get as ever, while others like the Winter Soldier's first appearance in Captain America number 6. But of course, people still actually like those characters, just going by with what I just said right there, you know. As mentioned before, there are many other comic pricing sites that people can pay that may have far more detailed data to refute all these findings. It doesn't matter. Everyone's selling on eBay. Unless if you got like a really expensive book, then you might be on Heritage Auctions. There is also the graded comic book market that has an entirely different market price structure. Correlation uh, does not imply. Um, causation? Sure. The comic book industry was already in decline by the time these shows came around due to poor hiring practices, ridiculously high cover prices for less value, and creators who attack the fan base any chance they get. That's all part of it. Um, you know, I can't argue that. There's been lots of uh, conflict in the world of comic books for the last decade or so, maybe longer. With all these negative factors to selling the big two comic book companies, it's not impossible to imagine that, yes, horror Disney Marvel Fair accelerated the devaluing of the comics you, the customer, spent years collecting. Thank God indie comics are bringing back the fun and the value of collecting again. Um, <clears throat> yes, there's uh, truth in that. But there's also uh, some non-truth in that. Um, <clears throat> I think Disney is not ruining the value of classic characters, right? Like, I think... You know, uh, an Amazing Fantasy 15 is untouchable no matter what Disney does, right? I think a Hulk 181 Wolverine is going to be untouchable no matter what Disney does. I think a giant size X Men is going to be untouchable no matter what Disney does. But you bring out new characters created from 2014 onward. Yeah, that's all sort of Disney's doing. I, I would agree with that. And as far as indie comics bringing back the fun and value of collecting again, absolutely. Today's indie comics are tomorrow's mainstream. Mark my words, everything that you see right now coming out of Kickstarter, coming out of these small publishing companies, <clears throat> eventually they're gonna get uh, they're gonna get you know, they're gonna get shows, they're gonna get video games, they're gonna get movies, they're gonna get picked from the litter. It may not be everyone, but it's gonna be some of them. And in ten years from now, you might go, Oh shit. I remember when that Niobe guy first started. So LP, we'll talk to you again real soon. Peace.